Good evening, Clark Atlanta University family and guests. I'm Jolene Butts Freeman, the Director of News and Media Relations for Clark Atlanta University, and welcome to a CAU Juneteenth Dialogue, Texas, Tulsa, and Today. I want to thank Jazz 91.9 WCOK for that introduction, that awesome music. So I just wanted to make sure that I gave them their props before we moved into our program. Now, this dialogue will enlighten viewers about Juneteenth, its history, and what it means today in our ongoing journey towards freedom, especially in light of the unrest around our country. We will begin tonight's dialogue with a prayer from one of Clark Atlanta University's students. That's Miss Olivia Stewart. She's a cause leader, and she is a junior majoring in psychology here at Clark Atlanta University. Olivia. Good evening and thank you. I am one of the call leaders for the Office of Religious Life and I would also like to welcome you in today's celebration of Juneteenth a CAU Dialogue. In response to the current events, it is important that we stop and reflect not only on the current tribulations, but also of those on the past to reveal any cycles of repeated atrocities. Although we have come a long way, as the late Nipsey Hussle will say, the marathon continues. I would now like to invite you to pray with me for the strength and guidance for our brothers, sisters, allies, on the front lines not in change, those putting in work behind the scenes, and all who may have been affected by any source of hatred. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you today to pray for strength and guidance through these times. We pray for peace and mindfulness to be effective in all that we do. We pray that by today's conversation, it ignites an everlasting flame of motivation to all who hear and share. We pray that you bless us with your presence throughout this entire conversation. In your name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Olivia, for that powerful prayer. And I see exactly why you are a cause leader. Yes. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Now, we have invited a distinct group of CAU leaders to join us for this important and relevant discussion. Our panelists are... President George T. French, Jr., again, our president, George T. French, Jr., Dr. Tanya Miles, university chaplain, Dr. Philip Dunstan, the chair of CAU's Religion and Philosophy Department. And I want to take this opportunity to let you know, by the way, all three of them are preachers, <laughs> something that I didn't know. <laughs> now, for our listeners and viewers who have joined this discussion, Please note that this is a pre-recorded discussion between our president and the panelists. Now at this time, I would like to welcome a leader who believes in Clark Atlanta University's commitment to the broader community in a virtual dialogue that affirms their humanity as people of color. He offers them hope in the midst of unrest. He inspires them to be active where God is active encourages them not to grow weary in well-doing. And again, I'll say not to grow weary in well-doing. And he confirms that we stand with them. Dr. French, welcome in your opening remarks, sir. Thank you so much, Jolene. And I'm, I'm so proud to be here um, this evening with this distinguished group of panelists and to have you as the facilitator. I'm, I'm most most grateful. So the celebration that we are embarking upon, of course, is Juneteenth. And I'm excited about Juneteenth as a, as a moment of liberation and emancipation. And glad that Dr. Miles, in her intimate wisdom, okay, I mean, she, she comes up with some great ideas, okay. And this one here, is one of those that is transforming the ministerial and spiritual life of Clark Atlanta University. So Dr. Miles, thank you. To God be the glory. Yeah. Thank you, President French, for your opening remarks. Now, Mr. President, we're gonna go ahead and move into our discussion. And we're gonna start with your assessment on where we are today, and why a Juneteenth dialogue? Again, I wanna say where we are today and why a Juneteenth dialogue. So Jolene, it was interesting that 
the Emancipation Proclamation took effect on, I believe it was January the 1st, 1863. But then two, two and a half years later, it took a general from the Union Army to actually go to Texas to let people know, black folks know that they were free. So it was a question then of communication that we can't even, we can't even conceptualize today because today with social media, the internet, um, CNN news being on the spot, that would have been news that spread in, in minutes. But in, so in 1865, you actually had someone, uh, this general, Union General Granger, making an announcement in Texas about something that was really effectuated, listen, more than two and a half years earlier. And, and if, you can, if you can really conceptualize that news going from basically Washington to Texas, taking two and a half years, when right now something happens here in Atlanta, it's gonna take less than two and a half minutes for it to be around the world. So we had some people that was, that were because of miscommunication and lack of communication were in slavery for too long. And I say that, and when I put it in the perspective of where we are today, the scientists in COVID-19 speak about the high, exponentially high rates of deaths and um, uh, 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 of, of African Americans catching COVID-19. What disappoints me about that, Jolene, Dr. Miles, at the beginning of this pandemic, it was told, and I, I, I debated our brothers and sisters, they said, African Americans cannot catch COVID-19. That right there, the miscommunication, and that's why I'm so proud to represent Clark Atlanta University where W.E.B. Du Bois was a faculty member. And he talked about the miseducation. And this was a miseducation factor in communication that has really hurt our, our community. And while the, while the scientists and medical experts are talking about the high exponential rates among African-Americans and how is that so, I'm disappointed that they're not tying it back to the miscommunication in the beginning. And that's what happened. We were told we couldn't catch it. I had alums that told me we can't catch it. I had alums that couldn't understand while we were postponing commencement and inauguration. And I'm saying to them, but we, we can't do those larger gatherings. And they said, but we can because we can't catch it. Now on the back end, here we are as an African-American community. And I'm hurt because of that. You know, President French, this is thought provoking to say the least. Um, I wanna move in, forward and ask Dr. Dunstan to join the conversation at this time. Dr. Dunstan. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. asked, where do we go from here? Community or chaos? In order to understand where we're going, we must first understand where we are, where we have been. So first, can you tell us, sir, where you think we are, where we are now? Thank you, Jolene. Where are we? America in crisis. Our nation is grieving. Black and brown people are in mourning. The pain of police brutality. We are protesting injustice and trying to create change in policies and procedures. We are tired of the inequality, the lack of access to resources. And we want to be treated equally as American citizens. And let me add this, the Black Lives Matter movement looks like the Black Power movement, where Black identity, value, 
and self-worth are paramount. Black and brown people in America want to have the right to fulfill their potential and continue to contribute to the enrichment of American society. And in order to do that, we must de demand and be, that we be present at the table and have the ability to use our power to create change. It was the philosopher Aristotle that said, all men need power to become. And without power or access to power, black people cannot live fully and appreciate our existence. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Dustin, for that perspective. Dr. Miles, let's talk about why are we here? Why are we here still in 2020, still seeking freedom? Did you say Dr. Miles or did you say the Dr. Miles? <laughs> the <laughs> Reverend Dr. Tanya Miles. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Butts Freeman, for that question. And it is an honor to share on this panel with you all this evening. Wow, I'm blown away by the comments um, thus far. Miscommunication that has gotten us to here. Struggles for power and freedom as black and brown people have gotten us here. Why are we here? There are there are a number of reasons why we are here today. Most are not of our doing. I'm gonna repeat that. Most are not of our doing. There has been a play for power that has been in effect since the beginning. A play for power, physical, mental, spiritual. In the book of Exodus, in the first chapter, Pharaoh was sitting down with some of his friends, some of his boys, some of his crew. And he was looking out at the Hebrew people and he said, look at them. They're more numerous and they are stronger. If they continue to multiply, they're gonna overtake us, they're gonna overpower us and we're gonna lose our power. And so he sat down with them and contrived a plan to oppress them so that they could be lifted up because he didn't wanna lose his power. Those same thoughts are in existence today. We are powerful, we are strong, and we are numerous, but there is oppression that has pushed us down. But we have to remember that in that same story, God went on to say, I have seen the oppression and the injustice of my people. And God called Moses to free the people. And so what I believe is that we have to do a better job of reclaiming our story and our narrative. We have to understand our history why else would they have withheld the information about Juneteenth? Why else would they have withheld the information about the Emancipation Proclamation? Why is it that most of us don't know about Tulsa and Black Wall Street? We have to reclaim the powerful story, the powerful narrative that is ours. And if we don't, we'll continue to be where we are. We are powerful and we are strong. And until we claim that, we will be right where we are. Wow. Reverend Dr. Miles, you know, that's so insightful. And it, it actually goes back to that quote from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, where he talked about knowing from where you have come from to be able to know where you're going in the future. That's you know, right. I, I know we all talk to our kids you know, our, our, our family members, but particularly our youth about that. And it's so important for them to clearly understand their history. You know? So, yes, yes ma'am. Moving further into the discussion, today we all acknowledge that we are living in unprecedented times. It has been said that people are seeking after God for help in understanding what is actually going on. 
So from your perspective, what scriptures can we look to for assurance in these trying times? And where is God in the midst of this all? We're gonna start with our president, Dr. French, followed by Dr. Dunstan and Dr. Miles. Do you guys want me to repeat the question? Thank you, uh, Jolene, I think, I think I'm good. Okay. Because I was um, deeply touched by the question when the question is asked, where is God in all of this? Mm -hmm. And from an historical perspective, uh, I mentioned the miseducation of the Negro, uh, Carter G. Woodson, and talked about the souls of black folks from William Edward Burkhardt Du Bois. And we have to look back to understand where we're going. So within the mythological bird called the Sankofa, the Sankofa had a, an egg in its mouth, which indicated fertility. And, and that Sankofa bird was flying in a forward direction, but was looking back. And that bird looked back because no matter if it's 2020 or 1920, realizing that we have to look back to see what our heritage has been. So we have the spirit of Sankofa. So as we take up the wings of the morning and fly forward as Clark Atlanta University, a fine university within the Atlanta University Center and, and the largest um, UNCF school in the nation, as we go forward aggressively into uh, cybersecurity and, and physical systems and all of this, we have to also look back to make sure we're taking care of the needs of our community as we have traditionally done. And we look back to ask the question, how have we been slighted for centuries as a people? and ask the question, where is God in all of this? And I would say to you that God is um, uh, always looking out for his people. I think the, 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 I think the um, yeah. uh, Dr., Dr. Miles, I think the quote forever, what is it? Uh, Truth forever on the scaffold, wrong, forever on the throne, mm -hmm. yet that scaffold sways the future mm -hmm. and standing in the dim unknown, standeth God looking watch upon his own. So while we might go through some minor, temporary, uh, cataclysmic uh, things, God is still in control. And that's why since 1865 and 1869, Clark College and Atlanta University, we've existed. And that's why we're stronger because God is still on the throne and he's still keeping watch above his own. And sometimes it's, it, it, we might question, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this struggle? But at the end of the day, God's got you. And, and that's what we really have to know. And as an African-American, as the diaspora, we have to come back to that truth, okay? I love the PhDs, EDDs, JDs, all of the Ds and all the alphabets. But if you think that's all more important than trusting and depending upon God, you got it wrong. So I just say, we just go back to depending upon our Lord and Savior, who for generations upon generations has watched out for us and he's going to continue to do it even in present day climate. Amen. Thank you, Dr. French, absolutely. Dr. Dunstan. Well, you know, all of the biblical prophets spoke truth to power. The major prophets, the minor prophets, they spoke about injustice and abuse. And one of my favorites is the prophet Amos. <laughs> My man. It was chapter 5, verse 24. And this was one of Dr. King's most quoted verses. And it said, let justice run down like water 
and righteousness. Hallelujah. And right now, the dam is broken and the flood is on the horizon. All right. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dustin. Dr. Miles. Wow. Um, I think I'll continue with the Old Testament prophets, one of the minor prophets, uh, Habakkuk. I love Habakkuk's story because it is a conversation between Habakkuk, who is overwhelmed with the injustice and the violence that he's seeing, but he's engaged in a conversation with God. Back and forth they go throughout these three chapters. Habakkuk is saying, why are you allowing me to look upon this violence? God, where are you? And God is saying, I'm right here, but you need to look, you need to stare, you need to be intentional about seeing where I am active. And Habakkuk in all of his hurt and being overwhelmed says, you know what? Okay, God, I'm gonna trust in you and I'm gonna watch and I'm gonna wait. And God responds and says, write the vision and make it plain and share it so that everybody can know it, but know that it will come true at the appointed time. Yeah. And then at the very end of the third chapter, Habakkuk says, basically, though I'm still waiting for the change to happen, God, I know that you've got my back and yeah. I know that you're right there with me. So I'm going to proclaim your truth. And I think about that today in the midst of everything that we're seeing on TV and the news, our students are out protesting peacefully. And I think about what Habakkuk saw. I think about what I see. I think about what we're seeing. And we're all asking the question, when is this going to change? And I think we have to remember that God is right there in the midst, but we have to look for the places and be intentional about searching after to see the goodness of where God is at work. And 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 Dr. Miles, I'm I'm 100 percent with you. And I was reminded as you spoke. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we question God, mm -hmm. there was a man named Job that lost everything. Lost That's right. His livestock, his children, everything. Yet, and then, but when he went to God, God asked, "Where were you, Job?" When I created all, I created the earth, the everything. Where were you? Now you gonna ask me a question? What? 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 <laughs> Uh, somewhere. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry, Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, President French. Absolutely. You know, you guys, this, this has been very powerful listening to all three of you. And, um, you know, I'm, I am really hoping that the purpose of this conversation, um, the, that the listeners and viewers really feel it and will be moved by it the way I have been. I mean, I, we just went to church really quickly in the last 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you also helped us to understand, and for those who are believers to know that God sustains us all through right. it all, yeah. through it all. And, right. and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to have been asked to participate in this conversation uh, because you, you, I, you, up. I, you are really, I know you, Jolene, you're really, <laughs> <laughs> we preachers, we're going to, we're going to bring you, hey, <laughs> bring and you I, was, homes, bitch. I was just getting ready to say that we can tell that you all are truly preachers and engulfed in the word. Yes. So thank you. So ladies and gentlemen. We've almost approached the end of our discussion, and I'd like to thank all of our panelists, our president, our esteemed president, Dr. George T. French, Jr., Dr. Philip Dunstan, and the Reverend Dr. Tonya Miles. Now, each of you have an opportunity at this point to share a closing remark on where are we going? So your closing remarks should tell us where we are going from here. And we will begin with Dr. Dunstan, followed by Dr. Miles. And of course, we will wrap it up with our esteemed president, Dr. George T. French, Jr. Thank you very much, Jolene. Yes, sir. French, Dr. T., thank you. I've enjoyed this, this session with you all. You know, I think this is a, 
an extremely wonderful time for higher education. A lot of people are kind of on edge and disgruntled right now, but I think particularly for HBCUs, we are more relevant now than ever. Training, nurturing, and developing future generations, instilling in them the core values of self-awareness, self-worth, and the value inherent in community activism. This is a critical time for a meaningful infusion of a social justice curriculum. In many of our courses, social justice is highlighted, but now it must become a major topic for critical analysis within our pedagogy. Thank you. Dr. Miles. That's good, Dr. Dunstan, Dr. D. That's really Thank good, you. I like that. Thank, um, you. Thank you, Jolene. President French, it has been an honor to engage with you in conversation also. As a university chaplain, one of my primary focuses is to help everyone, students, faculty, staff, even the broader community, to see the place where faith intersects with everyday life. Where we are right now, I believe that it's important for us, as President French said earlier, to look back, to look at the many ways and all of the times that our people have overcome because they sang, because they sang the spirituals together, they tapped their feet, they quoted scripture and did what they needed to do in order to move forward. Whether we're protesting, whether we're learning in the classroom, whether we are walking down the street, we have to remember that God is right there with us in the midst of it. And whatever it is that we're doing, we have to take our faith with us because it has sustained us in the past and it will help to encourage us to endure as we move forward. Where are we headed? The intersection between faith and everyday life because only with God can we reach our fullest potential, the potential that God created each one of us for. Wow. And, and, and thank you to my colleagues. I joined uh, my colleagues in thanking God for this opportunity. And you all are a distinguished group of panelists. And it's been my pleasure.